In today's video, we're gonna show you how we homeschool while living on the road full-time in an RV with four kids. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm married to Matt, and this is A Dream Life. A Dream Life is all about how we got away from the nine to five grind, figured out what our dreams actually were, and started living them. We have five kids, they're 19, 12, nine, six, and three. We're from Alberta, Canada, and we're currently living full-time in an RV, traveling North America. So since we're traveling, homeschooling makes the most sense. If we weren't homeschooling, we would only be able to travel during the summer months, and we really want the flexibility of being able to go where we wanna go when we wanna do it. It offers a lot of flexibility in our daily schedule too. If we have something planned, some activity in the morning, or kids are cranky in the afternoon, it's okay, we can wait until the young ones are in bed and we can do whatever schooling we need to do in the evening. We don't really worry about doing school every single day because there is so much natural learning happening anyway, but we do try to be as intentional about it as we can. So you might be wondering what we're using for curriculum as far as like our book work. So for reading, we have a very basic reader set that I use with the kids and I don't use the whole program. We just use the books and we read them and I explain as we go. Um, and that's called Read, Sing, Spell, I think for Amber, who's just in grade one this year. She's just doing some basic little workbooks, math workbooks that you would pick up at like Walmart or a place like that. Um, and then for science, we do sunlight, but again, we don't do the whole program. We pick out, what I used to do is I would pick out books from their grade level in science and they would choose the ones they wanted to do and we would do those and not do the other ones or just touch lightly on the other ones. What I do now is I don't worry about grade level so much and we do very much interest led, but I am making sure that they are learning about the different things that they need to cover, but we will not go in depth on things that um, aren't a natural interest or desire for them. Um, and then for history, we're doing story of the world. We have the chapter book and we have the audio CDs. So we'll either listen to those in the car or they will just read the chapter book. Also, we have music. So they're playing the ukulele. They each have their own ukulele. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, we've got Amber a keyboard for Christmas. Actually, her Opa did. And it has a microphone. So she loves to perform and sing songs and, and do all that. Um, the older girls like to play on the keyboard as well. And I did bring a keyboard. We, also brought um, a guitar, so the girls have been trying to learn some guitar, and they'll use YouTube videos to learn new things. Um, we got to spend some time at my cousin's place in California, and she's a music artist, and so we have three of her CDs. It's, uh, if you wanna look her up, she's pretty awesome. It's ambercrossmusic.com. And so when we were there, she's got a three-year-old little boy, and the kids just had a blast and they had this amazing jam session with her where they, she was teaching them how to play her song on one of her songs on, uh, on the ukulele. So that was pretty cool. I'll include a clip of that here too. They have a lot of playtime. They're meeting a lot of friends, um, lots of exploring on beaches, um, parks, just meeting new people and new experiences and doing new things. You got to see some alligators, right? Did you see some alligators? Yeah. yeah. And we saw an armadillo on the side of the road. That was pretty cool. Want it, Dora? Yeah? No. No? <laughs> This one isn't formally in school, but he's learning. He's learning stuff all the time. There you go, babe. 
So most of the time on this trip so far over the last two months, we haven't been doing a lot of book work or sit down type work because we've been doing a lot of traveling and visiting a lot of different types of places, beaches, aquariums, um, NASA. We went and just had a, an amazing day at NASA. I highly recommend that if you are in the Houston area in Texas. And on driving days, sometimes we will take some books in the vehicle. So they might take their language arts book or they might take some chapter books to read or they might write in their journals, that sort of thing. Um, another thing that we've been doing is when we do have a few days where we're stationary is the kids will uh, work on their math. They're doing teaching textbooks for math. Um, Daisy and Jasna are doing that for grade seven and grade four and they do that on my laptop and they really enjoy doing that. It's funny because they will actually beg to do homeschooling <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, as long as your room is clean. <laughs> so like I said, some of it will be experiences, some of it will be play and exploring and learning in a natural setting. A lot of it is conversational and so like this morning for example we were talking about where we're going to go next and where we've been and um, Daisy was super interested in what we were talking about so she joined in the conversation and then she said I know we could do geography today for school and I'm like sure so she pulled out her um, Canada map puzzle and spent a good hour or more just putting that together and so we're talking about capital cities and she's pointing them all out and naming them in all the different provinces um, and she was just really engaged and really interested because it was her idea and it was something that was interesting to her. So last night the kids really wanted to do some artwork and besides just drawing they've done lots of drawing in their art books. Um, and so I had them make sure that the camper was clean. That's kind of like the number one thing. <laughs> camper has to be clean or we don't play, we don't do anything, we don't go anywhere. So just really working on that, getting them to a place where they can maintain their space. Cause I think it's a hugely important skill for adults to have. And a lot of adults don't have it because they weren't trained in it when they were young. So that's also a part of their education. Um, and then another huge part of our education is character building and character development. And so we focus a lot of time on that, on relationship and communication skills. That one's huge too for us. And so we're, we're constantly working on those kinds of things, which I think is equally important to academics. So last night, the kids wanted to do this artwork. And so once they cleaned up, we brought out, um, I have some, I forget what they're called. Anyway, we watched a YouTube video on different techniques that you can use when you're using these wax pastels and they really enjoyed it. It was just a short six minute video and then I just gave them the paper and I went and just hung out with my husband for a little while, probably about an hour, an hour and a half, and they just created amazing things at the table. They just came up with their own designs and each one kind of went in a bit of a different direction. It was neat to see what they did with it. The cool thing about homeschooling that I really love is this thing that I've been talking about, about doing interest-led homeschooling. So Daisy, for example, she's nine years old. She loves to bake. And so that girl will watch Sugar Rush as part of her education because on that show, they're talking about different techniques and how to do them and she just finds that super fascinating. She will bake for us, she will bake for whoever we're staying with, and she just really enjoys all that cooking and baking stuff. One day she wants to own a bakery, and she's well on her way to that, having her own business. Amber is very musical and artistic, and she is very interested in doing those things. And then Jasna is very creative. And so like she's drawing and creating and writing all the time. So we don't actually find that homeschooling is a chore 
or something that we have to really fight with the kids over because we just kind of go with the flow. We don't, we don't really have like a solid schedule around it because when you're living on the road, you can't exactly plan for what comes up. Like if you need to go, like if we're boondocking, we need to go dump our water or something like that, um, dump our black tank and fill up again then we're moving so it's not like we can say every day we're sitting down from this time to this time to do whatever so we really just try to be intentional that we are doing something every day um, and that the kids are learning and like I said a lot of it is conversational and so it's really an amazing form of learning because those conversations are often child-led, like they'll bring up the question or they'll bring up whatever, and so then we can expand on that and we can go deeper into that. But because it's something that they were asking us, then they take an interest in it and it's not like they're sitting through some boring lecture that they can't wait to be over. Well, if you have any other questions about how we homeschool, please feel free to ask in the comments. And please, please, please subscribe to this video. Like right now, go press that subscribe button. I'll wait for you. <laughs> like this video. And if you didn't see my last video on the tour of our RV, um, I'll link that below. You can go back and watch that. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us.